Hey, this is Jeff, and we are here with USP Pro. In this video, we will look at how to create a new form and display it on the front end. So here we have USP Pro installed and activated. And now we can click on USP Forms to see all of our demo forms. And for more information on these demo forms, you can watch the previous video on uh, USP Form Demos. For this video, we want to create a new form, so we click on the Add New button and give it a title. And note that this title here is for your use only. It will not be seen by anyone on the front end. So be descriptive and use any name that you would like for the title of the form. Now we can publish the form. So for this form, let's say we want to add a title field. We can click on the Title Quick Tag and we can enter any title or label that we would like. And we don't need to worry about extra CSS classes. And we'll use the default value here for the maximum number of characters. And yes, we want this field to be required. So there is our first field. It is a title field. And now let's enter an email field because we also want to collect the user's email address. So we can type in a label and a placeholder, and we'll leave these other options at the default values. And we'll add one more field, the content field for the post content. Whoops. And we'll leave these other options at the default. And feel free to explore these other options here. They enable you to customize the field and to do just about anything. So now we've added our three fields and we click update to save our changes. And now we can view the form on the front end and we see our fields in place, the title field, email address, and post content. As explained in previous videos, the email address field is automatically populated with the user's email when the user is logged in. We are logged into WordPress, so WordPress says, hey, I know who you are and I know your email address, so let's make things easier and automatically fill that in for you. If you were to log out of WordPress and refresh the page, it would be blank. This would be an empty field so the user could enter their own email address. And uh, that's pretty much it. We've just created a new form Let's go ahead and submit a test post. We will enter our email address or a email address and some content and then click submit post. And it looks like it was a success. So now we can head over to the post screen and there is our new post that we just submitted. And that's all there is to it. Some more things we can do here. We can use these other quick tags to add other types of fields. We could add markup if we would like. For example, we could add an H1 tag like so. Whoops. And we can click update, and that will show up on the form. So we can use any markup we would like, including script tags and style tags, if we would like to include any inline CSS or st uh, scripts or styles. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. One more thing that I want to point out is the shortcode. As explained in previous videos, we can use this shortcode to display the form on its own post or page. So we can go into any post or page add the short code and then we'll see the form is displayed right there on the page at the page URL instead of at the form URL and that's pretty much it we've just built a form and displayed it on a poster page using its short code and one more thing I want to point out if we create a new form and click draft instead of publish, and we save this as a draft instead of publishing it right away, that's fine, but the short code will use the ID of the form instead of the slug. So 
when you publish a form right away, it gives you the, the short code uses the permalink slug. And if you save it as a draft right away, it uses the form ID. And you can see the form ID down in the lower left corner of the browser when you hover over the edit link here. You'll see in the URL that's displayed the number 1102, and that is the same number here. So they're interchangeable. You can use either. Um, it just depends on your preference and what you click when you first create the form. If we were to go in here and publish the form, it doesn't change the shortcode. So whether or not you see an ID or a permalink slug depends on whether or not you're publishing the form right away or saving it as a draft right away. Publishing it later will not change the ID of the in the shortcode. So that's it, and there's uh, more to come, so definitely stay tuned as I dig through the many things that can be done with USP Pro. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned.